Hey, my James here. Today I'm going to show you how you can connect to an Azure app service backend and have offline sync within your .NET and Xamarin applications with only four, yes, just four lines of code. So to do this, we're going to need some kind of backend to connect to. I didn't want to waste minutes watching it deploy, but we did this yesterday in a meeting. Uh, we had a meeting with Adrian Hall, uh, Senior Program Manager for Azure Mobile, and he was showing us uh, the, the deployment process and how they slightly tweaked it and uh, it was deployed within four minutes. So four is the lucky number here today. We've got four lines of code to get this working and four minutes to deploy the actual backend. Now I've already deployed it as I say so you can see it here. Um, yeah here it is. Uh, it's an app service and we're using Easy Tables. Easy Tables is the quickest and easiest way to get started with Azure App Service. It's built on Node.js, so it's not an ASP.NET backend, but actually you don't really have to worry about the backend because you're effectively able to upload an Excel spreadsheet and host that to your mobile applications. And in fact, that's exactly what I've done here. We have this to-do table, and if I select it, uh, we can see, here we go, over here. Perfect. Uh, we can see that we've got uh, some text, and complete. So we've got finish awesome library, buy a new SIM card, and they're both marked as false. So in order to interact with this backend, let's go ahead and minimize these. Um, I'm still not a fan of this sideways scrolling. Anyway, so in order to interact with this, uh, we have our URL here, and if we tap it, we'll uh, actually go to our uh, backend running. You know, running. It is actually running, but uh, it's just a default. Um, web page that is, is supplied. You can update that if you really wanted to, but there's very little point. What we want from this is that URL. And the reason we want that URL is because we're, gonna, we're going to need it when we initialize our our SDK. So we know the back end is running. We know that we've got at least two items within our table. Let's go ahead and connect to it. So here we are within Xamarin Studio. I've already got a sample project and this is all on GitHub. So if you're like, I really don't understand how this just happened, how, how did he do that? You can go ahead and look at this on my GitHub, which is mycodes.net. I'll put a link in the description for you to go and grab that. So we have a class, which is to-do, because this is a simple to-do list application. Now, in order to consume this from Azure and to be able to push updates to Azure, I'm going to need to inherit from entity data. Now, this entity data isn't coming from the entity framework. This is actually coming from the Azure mobile library. So we've created this for you, and we have two versions of it. You can have entity data, and this particular version of the class means that you're gonna manage any conflicts yourself. And then we have entity data always latest. Now always latest just means that the backend will always save the latest version when it comes to conflicts. So if it, if it receives, so if it receives two versions of the the to-do item, it will look at which one was saved most recently, and that's the one it's going to persist. So we'll add the entity data to to-do, uh, and now we're ready to consume this model. So we'll save that. We're now going to go into the app uh, CS for our Xamarin Forms project, which is the entry point for our Xamarin Forms application. And you'll see here we've already uh, created uh, or defined our client, which is going to be of iEasy mobile service client. But now we need to actually create an instance of this. So we'll do client equals new easy mobile service client. And we want to initialize this with the URL from Azure. So let's get rid of that because we don't really need it. So now we're saying go, this is the endpoint, this is where our backend is hosted. You'll need to navigate to this location in order to interact with it. We need to define our tables now. So we're gonna register our to-do item. So this to-do model is now being registered as a table. And we're gonna deal with the rest of the magic for you so that you can now just do CRUD operations on this table and it will link back to your to-do item within Azure. And we could add multiple tables. So we could register a table for something else. So if we're doing a beer application, we would register uh, our beer object as well, assuming that it's inheriting from entity data. But right now we want to finalize the schema. And that's the four lines of code to get 
initialized with our SDK. And we drop a page, which is XAML. And within this page, you'll see that I've got some bindings. Um, so for example, our item source is coming from items. If we go to the code behind for this view model, you'll see that we're we're actually just you know bound. The binding context is this to do's view model, which basically has nothing in it. Um, well, it has nothing in it. We have a constructor for the client, but it's doing nothing. So in order to make this work with our SDK, what we need to do is bring in the base forms view model, and we're using generic. So we say to do. Uh, in order so that it knows which table we're going to be consuming. And then lastly, but not least, we uh, call the base implementation uh, for the constructor for the base forms view model. And now, with you know those four lines of code and then just tweaking our view model, we can run this on iPhone and it should, in theory, let's uh, bring the simulator over to the main screen, should in theory go off to Azure and it should fetch the data that's within our SQL database using easy tables. It's just launching the app. Boom, there we go. Finish awesome library, buy new SIM card. And we can double check that that has worked as we expect by just coming over to the Azure portal, scrolling over. You can see finish awesome library, buy new SIM card. So that is a very very quick overview of how this works. It's four lines of code plus a little tweak to your view model and you can get all of the CRUD operations to interact with an Azure app service basically for free in terms of the code that you need to write. Now this works for easy tables, it also works if you're using an ASP.NET backend. Um, this is all available on NuGet, it's all available on GitHub so you can get involved, you can put pull requests in, you can add file bug reports, you can request new features. Uh, we're definitely open to working with the community. As I say, this was built by myself and Piers Bogan. Piers has been phenomenal in this process of building this library. Um, love Piers, he, he writes some great code. Um, so this library is just to help you guys. If you find that you're too limited in terms of the API surface that we've provided, and you need to do something a little bit more complex, you've got two options. You can inherit from our interfaces, so you can you know, build your own versions of and still use our library. Or alternatively, you can just get rid of our library and just consume the straight Azure mobile SDK. Um, so you're not stuck at this high level when you want to go deep uh, and you know, have full control, you've still got that availability to you. So thanks very much, I've been Mike James. That is the Azure App Service Helper class available on NuGet and GitHub. See you next time.